Yes, greetings. And my name is Tafari Tizadi. I presently reside in St. Croix, the U.S. Virgin Islands. Father of five, King Manto, Queen Josette, and also a Nyabingi priest in the ancient Ivanara, community activist, and a peaceful, loving human being. Give thanks for this day, give thanks for life, health and strength and all praises on to and I save you for the Mahawai Haile Selassie and Empress Menin for their continual guidance and blessings on us. Yes, we are here in Atlanta, Georgia we're giving thanks as we sit here in the presence of our loved ones. And as I give a documentary of myself and the purpose of our mission at this time for we we just came off a, a expedition trad a cannabis expedition trad to Seattle Washington and also to Colorado where cannabis is not only is it legal but uh, we see where the community has embraced it as well the crime rates in Colorado have dropped tremendously. Uh, the, the economy is booming right now. Also in Washington state, the crime rate is very low. So I see cannabis, it is the way that can help our nation and families. Yes, those that are in poverty, struggling, this will help break that economic yoke and help lift up the families throughout the United States and the world. So yes, Obama, if you're listening, President, free up the herb. Here we go. <laughs> the cannabis, the herb is the sacrament of the Rastaman. It is a sacred herb. We do no wrong for full taking in the herb. It brings us closer to our inner thoughts, to our spiritual being, and also with nature, and connects us with the supreme being within ourselves. Uh, no matter what color, creed, nationality, the herb is for everyone. And everyone is spiritual beings, so more power to those who full take of the herb. Those who don't, please do so quickly that you can be in the same irates like all of us. You're missing out. <laughs> when I pop there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just got me talking, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You didn't Wait. tell me what to say, you just got no, me talking. Okay. <laughs> Give thanks and praises again unto Gramawi Kadamawi Emperor Hail Selassie I and Empress Menin. Yes, all praises unto the Most High. And to our ancestors, the founding fathers and mothers of this movement, all honor and praises unto the eye. For the eye spirit do live on forever. Ethiopia, the foundation of civilization. Ethiopia, the solid rock of creation, where the first humans were found. For the oldest fossil was found in the high mountains of Ethiopia, Denkenesh, also known as Lucy. So we know that in the Bible, it is said that the great river went out of the Garden of Eden and it branched out into four heads. The source of this great river is found in Ethiopia in the high mountains of Bahadar in Lake Tana, the Blue Nile, that opens up into the whole Nile River that feeds the whole of creation. As it is said that in Genesis that 
the Father created all living things. He created every herb, every fruit that has a seed within itself that produces itself. He said unto us, they shall be for meat. That's why the Rasta man, we have an idol diet. Because it was mentioned in Genesis that idol shall be our meat. Same way, we know Ethiopia, not just as the cradle of civilization, but it is the land where the gods love to dwell. Yes, Ethiopia is the highest region in creation. And it is the holy land. I visited in 2009 Ethiopia and I've seen where Ethiopia is preserved. It, was, it has been preserved and kept as a secret from the whole world until Emperor Hale Selassie I came crowned in 1930 as King of Kings and Lords of Lords, the conquering Lion of Judah, along with his Empress, Empress Menin, Asfa, who was crowned on November 2nd, 1930, along with him as well. Uh, we know that His Majesty, in 1930, when he was crowned, he invited all the nations them to come into Ethiopia and to pay homage and to see the crowning and the glory of the King of Kings. From that time on, Ethiopia was open to the world and the world was welcomed in by the King of Kings. The Rastafari movement, it took birth at the coronation. Uh, Leonard Howell, our great patriarch, traveled from Jamaica to Ethiopia to bear witness of this coronation. Upon his return to Jamaica, he declared the divinity of his imperial majesty, Emperor Hill Selassie I. He declared the divinity that the king of kings, yes, carried the covenant and the power and the glory of God himself in flesh. And that was the birth of the Rastafari movement in this dispensation. I said in this dispensation because Rastafari movement is from the birth of creation. The liberty of this movement, Rastafari, Aital, the height of the glory of worshipping the heavens and the earth, the father and the mother of creation, in peace and harmony with all of creation and all of mankind. This was the Rastafari movement at the birth of creation until man lost their way and diverted from the course of right and lean and wrong. So we saw in 1930 the birth of this Rastafari movement again that sprung up in Jamaica, in the West Indies, in the Caribbean. Leonard Howell preached the divinity of the King of Kings, Emperor Hill Selassie I, and the people responded. The movement began. Archibald Dunkley Hibbert, who also was an ancient patriarch, also preached the divinity of His Majesty. And the movement started to take more shape and form. The first uh, forefathers that preached the divinity of His Majesty, they carried not locks on their head, but there was ones who was Bible Bible followers, and in the Bible, Christ told his apostles that, you read in the book of Matthew, that he must leave to go prepare a place for them. And when he go, he shall tell his father that to please send the comforter unto the people. The comforter who shall keep the people in our remembrance of Christ himself and shall tell them and reveal the spirit of truth of all truth unto creation. Well, His Imperial Majesty Emperor Selassie I, 2,000 years after Christ left, His Majesty returned 2,000 years now, 1892. We saw the birth of Lij Tafari Makanin, and 
It was said in 1892 that there was a seven year drought, such a great famine that took many lives, cattle, human beings, and on the birth of His Majesty, the heavens opened up and rain came down, pouring for days. In Revelation chapter 12, you will see where it says, A woman was clothed with the crown of the moon, the sun, the stars, and she was travailing to give birth. The serpent was angry at this woman because she was about to give birth to a male, a man's son. This man-child is said to have been caught up to the throne of the Almighty. And the serpent was angry. In the Bible it said the serpent, the serpent opened up his mouth and gushed out water to flood the whole place and to drown the little child before it could really be born. Well, the heavens and the earth responded. The earth opened up its mouth and swallowed the water up so that this man-child could be born. In 1892, when that rain came, it broke a seven-year drought. And because of the dryness of the drought, the severity of the drought, when all that water came down, the earth swallowed it up. It was so dry. The water was not able to settle. So, in Revelation it said the serpent opened up its mouth and spooted out water. And it said that the woman that gave birth, she was taken away into the spirit and led into the wilderness because the serpent wanted to destroy her life for giving birth. Well, his Majesty's mom, Empress uh, Wazaro Yashimabet, she lost her life while giving birth to His Majesty. So I look at that Revelation 12 and I see the symbolization and the money. His mom, Empress Yashimabet Wazaro, she gave birth unto this man child that would rule the world and caught up onto his throne. Uh, his Majesty was the only surviving child by Yashima Ben. If I'm not mistaken, he was the seventh, the seventh time that uh, Yashima Bet was pregnant to give birth and she lost all the other child, all her other pregnancy was fatal. So His Majesty, he was that one lion, man child, that Empress Yashima Bet was ordained to bring forward into this world. So we give thanks for His Majesty opened up Ethiopia to the whole world. Ethiopia is the fastest building city in this 20th century that we saw. And upon the coronation in 1930, Leonard Howell, who visited Ethiopia and came to witness the glory of this coronation, returned to Jamaica, I clear in the divinity of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I. Yes, that the person of His Majesty is divine. Yes. So, Henceforth came the Rastafari movement. The early pioneers of this faith, it was a movement called the Youth Black Faith Movement, with leaders like Rasbono G's, yes, who took us forward and said, Well, look, before the Youth Black Faith Movement, they used to call them comb heads and ones with beard. And I clear the divinity of His Majesty. And Rasbono G's come and said, Right now, you have to grow your locks, your covenant upon your head. And you have to accept the healing of the nation, which is cannabis, better known as marijuana, 
Rasbono G's is that ancient patriarch that brought forward the Nyabingi ancient order as we know it today. Before that, it was called the Youth Black Faith Movement. Them who combed the hair and them who didn't comb the hair, them who wear beard. But when Rasbono G's herald in and said, Well, look, right now, you have to grow your locks upon your head because this is a, a sacred movement, a righteous ayada, and the whole of herb is now our sacrament. Then we saw where those that were moving towards Rastafari movement accepted these precepts and these principles that, yeah, one must Throw away the comb and grow your locks. Stop eat Babylon food, Babylon meat. And start seek a more idol liberty, self-sufficiency, self-reliance, self-determination. This is what Rastafari come, come out of, come from. Because in those days, when the brethren and sisters start to grow their locks, and actually embrace the herb. That's when brutality came upon us. That's when the government turned upon us. Who is these nappy head people smoking marijuana and calling Haile Selassie for us, the Almighty God? Just so we were brutalized, imprisoned, and went through many uh, discrimination. We're in Bakawal. Police came in on a regular basis and destroyed the homes of our elders. Yes, destroy the homes, the gardens, all the food in every house, household in Pinnacle. Every family had a bag full of money. But Rastafari had no need to go spend the money. Because we were self-sufficient. We eat what we grow. The herb we smoke, we grow. The clothes you see we wear, we make. The shoes on our feet, we had man, skilled man that made the shoes. We had everything, self-sufficient. We would harvest our food and our crops, our herbs, and go down into the market and sell them to the people. And then return to the hills. The police would come in and destroy our homes, take our money, and constantly raid the home. So what happened? The racist them ended up coming out the mountains. Some go down into town. Some go saw. Some gone in that area. And the brutality still didn't stop. It's not until 1966, April 21st, 1966, when His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, came and visited Jamaica. It is when His Majesty visited Jamaica and he spoke to the government of Jamaica and tell them to leave the Rastaman alone for the Rastaman have done nothing wrong. You see? It's when His Majesty ordered them and told them to leave us alone. It's when Babylon stopped tearing down our, our, our uh, villages and destroying our things them and the Rastafari movement is a movement based on spirituality I say spirituality and not religion because religion is a set of rules and devices used to keep the people captives yes and where you see religion you're gonna see them who is dominating the others them whether by gain for money or, or materialism so what we have is spirituality which was given to us by the almighty from the beginning of creation till this time and forever it is a network that connects all of I and I to the almighty and to every living thing that is in creation so we deal with spirituality Rastafari is that power and we look closely at the Bible because no matter what language or what text or version of the Bible you are reading, the word and the essence of the word 
It still remains the same. Yes. Man didn't create himself. A man didn't create this iration. A higher power did. And I see same way too. That the Rastafari liberty is based on idol. An idol liberty to its fullness. From the earth up. Yes, every herbs, every food we eat is that of idol. It came from a seed that bears itself and has the power to reproduce itself. That is meat. The Rasta man deal with the Yabapat, which is made out of clay. Because the Yabapat, it carries the idol vibration of creation. is made from the earth. The Rasta man cook on the tree stone. Rather than on a conventional oven and, 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 and stove, we cook on the tree stone and blaze a fire because this is what keeps I and I grounded. The food tastes different when cooked in a yabba pot or clay pot than when it's cooked in a, a tin metal pot. Yeah, you see? The Rasta man liberty, same way, is a liberty based on I and I culture. Because our culture is our liberty. The culture is rooted in that of Africa. Because the people cannot know where they're going if they don't know the past where you come from. That's why when you hear the, the Sankofa, which Sankofa says it's our duty, our responsibility to go into our past and retrieve our own history. I said history and not his story. Because all the textbooks them that we have been reading for all these decades is not I and I story. It is his story. The European story. The white man's story. So I and I go into our past to retrieve I and I story. So that I and I can know where we've been, where we are, and where we're heading. This is everyone's right. To know where they have come from. A tree without. A people without the knowledge of the past. Is like a tree without roots. Words from the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Same way to Garvey. The founder of the United Negro Improvement Association. Same way Garvey. As a Pan-Africanist. Was a follower of the founder. The father of Pan-Africanism, who is known as Dr. Wilmot Blyden, who is from St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. He was born there. And he repatriated to Liberia. Wilmot Blyden is one of the first men to tell the people that out of Ethiopia, from the east, a black king shall be crowned. And Marcus Garvey is known as echoing and sounding that trumpet again that from the east a black king shall be born and he shall be our savior and idema so most of the rastafari brothers and sisters in the early 40s and 50s were actually members of the garveyites movement and having seen the manifestation of the prophetic words of blyden and garvey telling them to take heed to the crowning of this black king in the east. They stepped right in to the spirituality of the Rastafari movement. As seeing his imperial majesty emperor Elisilassi the first. As our black idema and our savior. So henceforth the Rastafari movement took on with strong roots and foundation from Ethiopia. Yes, because, like I said, this is a spiritual movement. So same way, when His Majesty was crowned, in Revelation 5, verse 5, it, it told I and I to weep not, for behold, the conquering Lion of Judah has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seals they have. So I and I see this is where the heretical movements come on to I and I and I in the Caribbean seas for they took I and I far beyond and the irates of the most I came and I deemed us and he claimed us 
His Majesty visited Jamaica in 1966, in April 21st, and told the government to leave the Rastaman them alone. Stop destroying their villages, for they have done nothing wrong. His Majesty also told us that we are blood brothers and sisters, Ethiopians and we in the West. And the Rastafari movement is a movement of one love. It's a movement of righteousness and peace and harmony with creation and everyone that is in creation. No matter what color or creed or religion or nationality, Rastafari is for all. Yes, there's one God, one heaven, one earth, and we are one people, spiritual kinsmen in the earth. So yes, Rastafari, we use cannabis, the healing of the nation, we use it as our sacrament. Yes, cannabis, known as marijuana, it comes out of a seed. Like in Genesis, Genesis it said, every herb that bears a seed, and in its seed itself, they have its power to reproduce itself. To us, it shall be for meat. So, yes, we use cannabis as our sacrament. We also eat cannabis. We also drink cannabis because it is a herb. And not just as a sacrament, but as a healing for the whole temple, the human body. That's why today we hear of medicinal marijuana. Because the doctors now know that it has great medicinal properties. But Babylon has been, been spreading propaganda and demonizing this herb because they know that the herb has the power to save the planet and to heal the nations from Rehabitis as Peter Tash will call it. You know, I and I who live in Babylon and suffer from the Babylon strange and, and weak mentality and false ideology, he calls this disease Rehabitis and the only cure for it is cannabis. As my brother Peter Tash said, yeah man, just legalize it and don't criticize it. The Rastaman, I and I and I will advertise it. So just like now Babylon want to legalize it and, and call it medical marijuana, remember I and I brothers and sisters who you've been persecuting for so long. Yes, Time for you now to repair the damage and set the record straight. That the Rastaman was telling the whole world the truth all the while. Yeah, and it's time now to come and repair the damage. All my brothers and sisters sitting in Babylon cell prison, time to bust the walls and let them out. All the families whose lives you have destroyed because you have locked up and imprisoned the breadwinner of the house, Time to come and repair the damage, for it is redemption time in the earth. Redemption time, liberation time. It is time now for all the atrocities and the wicked acts you have performed in the earth. The Rastaman come to warn you and to tell you, set things straight now. Repair the damage, reparation, it is a must. Repatriation, it is a must and the restoration of the human race and Africa, it is a must. So, yeah man, I give thanks for this time and this space and the opportunity to share these few words to let the eye know that Rastafari, it is the way. Rastafari, it is the message that goes out to all nations. Yes, and remember it is the order of peace, love and unity. Yes, no matter what age, no matter what Color or creed or nationality. I listen as he first. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conquering Lion of Judah. Yes, no one can dispute that. Yeah. I listen last I the first. Sure. Empress Menin. Empress Menin is the mother of creation. For all women must be honored and respected. All ones came from the womb of the sacred mother of creation. So. Now is the time we must advance in righteousness and we must shine our light 
so that the whole world can see and step into the light as well. Give thanks. Eliai, Selassie, Ja, Rastafari, to the whole world. Perfect love, Isaiah.